Sand mining is something which is not very well understood, but we all know that Mumbai is a city which has been built all the time. We see it everywhere. We suffer from other aspects of building, like not being able to afford houses. I think that's something we all relate with. So this is a, a, a picture on Thane Creek, where building is also taking place. So now that the area in Mumbai is completely exhausted, we have people are moving out to Thane, Navi Mumbai, other places where there's also a lot of building going on. So this is the kind of building that we have. But when you look more closely at the picture, you'll find that it's not just a picture of building. It's a picture of sand mining. The boats that you saw there in the earlier picture, these, those boats are not there just to have a joyride or, or of some kind of fishing or something. The people who are mining sand were fishermen, but today they are mining sand. It's happening right there in full public view. Anybody can see it, but they don't really look because they don't realize that sand mining is something you need to look at. We see heaps of sand lying at business at the building sites, and we assume that they come there almost by magic. They're just there, and sand is always available. When you look even more closely at that same picture, you will find that this is the way that they are mining sand. It's more than just getting sand and putting it there at the site of building. I think a lot of you are engineering students. Building requires sand. We all know that. But we don't stop to think where that sand is coming from, how it's being mined, and how it's impacting people. This is manual sand mining. What people do is that these people used to be fishermen. They are the original Kohli community of our city, Mumbai. They, there was a time when they owned the land. They did whatever they, they went out, they fished. They had fish to eat every day and no worries. Today, this is the kind of work they're engaged in because the process of urbanization, which we all take for granted as being imperative, actually means that these people have been dispossessed from their land they no longer have a fishing business because that creek is too polluted to fish. There aren't any fish. So some of their, about maybe 20 years ago, which is when this whole thing started very intensively, some of their uh, ancestors or fathers or whatever decided to stop fishing and start mining sand. Once that happened, the level of the creek dropped. It dropped to an extent where they could no longer fish even had there been fish. It's a different matter that there aren't any fish. Today, when you mine sand uh, like this manually, you need to dive down into a creek, sometimes 40 or 50 feet, even more. In olden days, we all read stories, fairy tales, where pearls were mined like this. People would go dive down. They would not have any safety equipment. It was an extremely hazardous job. Today, they're doing this for sand. The creek is so polluted that fish cannot live there. But people are diving down 50 feet. You can see a diver there with his bucket next door. He has nothing except that one rod, which you can see, the black rod, which he is holding on to and diving down. Every year, a number of people die because you cannot withstand this pressure unless you're drunk. So they are given, ox they are given liquor, and it's usually country-made liquor. A number of them die because there are strong currents in these creeks. We all know that the creeks surrounding Mumbai are tidal creeks. When, this, when the water comes in or goes out, particularly as you near the monsoon, the, and you're 50 feet down with nothing, not even a safety rope, you, and a bucket in one hand and holding on to this uh, rod with the other, there's a very strong chance that you will get swept away and people do get swept away. I think this is something, when I started working on sand mining, I had no idea this was the thing. When I first met these people, they told me, we are the sand mafia whom you have come to oppose. And here we are before you. We are more pathetic than you realize. You can see this picture. My son was with me. He was in the, uh, in, still in school when this happened. You look at this boy's face and tell me how old you think he is. I spoke with him. He said he was 13. And he had been mining sand for three years because he was too ill to continue going to school. He had fever. When my son has fever, I keep him in bed, I give him soup, I look after him, I take him to the doctor. When this child had fever, his parents said, you're obviously not a good student, go and mine sand. So what is the way out of it? 
we have mechanical sand dredging. It looks very peaceful. There's none of that hustle bustle of all this, these violations which are taking place. But unfortunately, mechanical sand dredging for the environment is much worse than manual sand dredging. And the reason is that when you mine sand mechanically, you look at this boat, it's just a small tube and one man standing there. But when you mine sand manually, it requires a lot of manpower, a lot of labor, and people have to dive down. So it's, it, there's a limitation to how much sand you can actually extract. When you do it like this, you just put in a small generator and you put that tube down and it continuously sucks up sand. So where this, the depth of the water used to be at six feet, people could mine sand at six feet and with manual sand dredging, that depth has increased to 40 to 50 feet. The manual sand dredgers are very well aware that if the depth increases much more than that, they will no longer be able to dive. But the mechanical sand dredging in those areas, the depth has gone beyond 100 feet in some places. And now there's a struggle between the manual sand dredgers and the mechanical sand dredgers. The manual sand dredgers know that they are ruining the environment, but they feel they're doing it slowly. The mechanical sand dredgers don't worry about the environment. So in places, some villages in Vaipanna, for example, they have, they have mined up to 100 feet the salt water has gone into their fields. They have had to abandon the fields. They no longer have enough sand even to build village houses. So they have moved on to other places. They're trying to encroach on the territory, which the manual sand dredgers are now doing. And this is a huge issue in court because there are all these different groups. Unfortunately, in spite of all this, there is no overall policy which looks at the actuality on the ground. Very few people know what's happening why the sand mining is bad, we only look at development. Development is good, but we need to check what are the costs and what are the type of developments. I think all these students here need to understand both aspects of development and then take a conscious decision as to what kind of development we're looking at. The third kind of sand mining, when you start putting in controls and say that you should not be mining sand on, in the creeks indiscriminately, this is beach sand mining. We live on a, in a coast, coastal city. When you mine sand on the beach, you can see on the photograph on the left, there's the, the depth of the beach itself has dropped. And you can see the immediate result of that, which is that three trees have fallen down. And you can see how much the, the depth of the land has dropped as a result of that. If this is what's going to happen to our entire, our, our, Beach lands are some of the most valuable lands that we have. If we are going to ruin our rivers, our creeks, and our beaches, and we are a city, most cities are coastal cities, most old cities, uh, Mumbai, Chennai, many cities uh, will be directly and immediately affected. If you start taking away the sand, which is on the beaches north and south of Mumbai, and you start taking away the sand in the creeks which surround Mumbai, we, are, we, were, we started as an island city, we are an island city, even if we join ourselves by bridges to the coast. But when you take away the surrounding uh, natural barriers, imagine what's going to happen to our city. And this is for you. <laughs> I mean, our generation is doing it, but you are the ones who are going to face it. This kind of ecological and human rights violations damage can take place because of the existence of a mafia. What is a mafia? A mafia, to me, is, some, is an agency which is not afraid to con conduct illegal activities, to use violence, threats, in whatever way they have to, to protect their illegal activities, and are protected by the police and the administration to some degree. If they, they don't enjoy this kind of protection, they cannot operate in full open view of everybody. So this is a news article, look at the date, it's today. These kind of news articles have been appearing periodically. This is the third attack in the, in the village of Morina, in uh, the third attack on a police officer. So imagine that police officers are being attacked, government officers are being attacked. The whole sand mining story started because I was attacked. When I was attacked for the first time, uh, I had seen sand mining happening on the beach. Actually, it was the same beach of which I just showed you a photograph. I saw it and I knew that that was the end of the beach if I didn't do anything. 
I went and approached the authorities, which was the district collector, and I asked for help. And he said, we can only help you if you catch them red-handed, because we don't know who they are. So I had no choice. I knew it wasn't safe. But I, when I next knew they were there, I went there. I caught them red-handed. I called the police. I called the collector. And fortunately, they came very late. And by the time they came, they had, I had already been attacked. I was in hospital for a day. And that made me very, very resolved that this is an issue I'm going to take up. I didn't know that it's an issue with such low awareness and so much resistance to creating awareness because of the very strong lobbies which wanted sand mining to continue, that now, even 14 years later, we are still struggling to get policies in place and to get people to appreciate that there's a problem with implementation on the ground. Even our latest sand mining policy, which is just as of last month, issued by the center, does not take any notice of the fact that there's a mafia and that government officers who try to implement the law get attacked. It assumes that everything is fine and places the entire burden of both uh, deciding the places as well as implementing the law on district officers who are not able to do it. The United Nations, in 2012, we had a side event, Avas Foundation had a side event at the United Nations Conference of, Bio, of uh, Parties in the Convention of Biodiversity, which was held in Hyderabad. Uh, we presented the issue of sand mining, talked about the damage caused by sand mining. Unfortunately, I was pretty shocked to realize that at that time, the UN did not have any idea that sand mining was ecologically damaging. They don't have, didn't have a single document, no study, no paper. And yet, coastal issues were supposed to be one of the most important issues taken up by the Convention of Biodiversity. After this, you can see the, the poster on the left. This is the one which we made for the UN. Don't bury the issue of sand mining. After this, we actually went on to Juhu Beach. We buried ourselves in the sand. I was there. Um, a lot of fishermen were there. There were some children from the Kohli community. We went there, we buried ourselves, and we spoke for the sand, almost like a Chipko movement, that if you can go and hug a tree saying, save our trees, please save our beaches as well. We are here, and we are with these beaches. Now, the UN has issued an advisory that was just last year, or rather in 2014. They have issued an advisory. They have realized that sand mining is an issue not only in India, it's an issue all over the world. There's a huge international trade in sand. Um, some countries are exporting sand illegally to other countries who are using it to expand their actual physical borders. And based on that, a film was made called Sand Wars. This film was shot in India in 2012 and all over the world. I participated in the film. This is the director of the film, Dennis Delistrac. It was released, it was premiered in Paris in May 2013, and we showed it in Bombay for the first time in India in February 2014. This is the showing in Mumbai. He came here, he came to Juhu Beach with us, he buried himself in the sand with us, and he spoke for sand along with all of us. And this sand has been, has been very well received. It has managed to change some of the sand mining policies in the EU, in other countries, it has, been, it has been seen by the UN. It has, been, uh, why it has received a number of awards, international very important awards, environmental awards, the Greenpeace Award, US Awards, Japanese Award, all kinds of awards, at least 50 awards all over the world. So if you stop sand mining, what do you do? The government came out with a policy that we use what they call manufactured sand. Manufactured sand is crushed stone. And this is what they crush. They break down our mountains, they crush it, and they use it instead of sand. The same mafias are engaged now in stone quarrying as used to be engaged in sand mining. These are the mountains around Navi Mumbai. Maybe some of you have seen them. According to me, this is the worst possible alternative. There are other alternatives. We all recognize that building has to take place. Our country has to grow. We support development of our country. But we need to look at future costs. And this cost in the Western Ghats, which is this, these are the foothills of the Western Ghats. The Western Ghats are extremely biodiverse. They have been recognized by UNESCO as World Heritage Sites. This is not the fate that we would like for, for them. 
Mumbai is a city which is not under construction. This is a wrong notion. It's a city under reconstruction. This is debris which is generated on a daily basis. We have been reading every day about the garbage dump. We know what's happening because a huge volume of garbage is being dumped and it's affecting all of our health. The de part of the stuff which is dumped there, about 20% is debris. And this debris already contains what they call aggregate building material. It's either sand or it's crushed stone. We are dumping it in the garbage dump. We are creating problems there. And we are mining sand or stone instead of recycling this. So what am I saying? I'm saying, please recycle. We, talk, we know about recycling other materials. There have been roads which have been built using plastic. An entire road in Jamshed, Jamshed Nagar in uh, the Tata Iron and Steel factory has been built using plastic. If this is the kind of material that we can use for development, if we can recycle debris and get back aggregate, sand, stone, and build, maybe it can be used for a very precise application of very high-rise buildings. But most of our buildings, it has been done. There has been a pilot project. It has succeeded. There have been buildings in Los Angeles which have been done like this. There have been pilot projects in Navi Mumbai. They have succeeded. The IIT Bombay and other engineering students have come up with projects which show that it can be done. These need to be mainstream. They need to be made commercial. If I don't believe that our builders are in, unable to put the money which would be required for R&D of such a, problem, such a project for mainstreaming it. It would solve many issues at once. It would take care of our rivers, our creeks, our beaches. It would stop dumping in our garbage grounds. And it would uh, reduce this kind of plastic on the beaches. It can be used in so many ways. We need to look at this. So all you students here, your, many of you engineering students, these are the kind of projects. We need engineering projects and solutions to our problems. But first, we need to recognize our problems. And therefore, we need engineering students to take part in community projects also. It's not just a question of doing something on the side because you're going to get a better job. It's a question of giving back to society, finding meaningf meaningful answers, and doing something which is going to make you satisfied with your future career not just a money-making career. Don't bury the issue of sand mining. That's me, that's a fisherman, that's his son at the back, and various members of the Kohli community uh, who have buried themselves in the sand. They have a message to give you. Please hear it, please help, please do something. And while doing it, get well soon, Mumbai. <laughs> Thank you.